Hey there, welcome to Take 5. I know it's been a while since we've done one. We've been investing in our youth and our kids and Sunday morning teachings as well as other things here at McClary Rock Harbor. But I wanted to take some time to do a special Take 5 here this week to um, curb some doubts that I've been seeing out on the internet um, about certain translations of the Bible being um, good or bad and things like that. Uh, there, there are some things that are circulating out there that are misconstruing some things about different translations that aren't actually true. And so I wanted to lend some insight to that today to help maybe ease everybody's worries about that because I've seen a lot of people on my friends list sharing these things. Oh, I'm never reading this translation again because it's bad because they did this. And what's going on is people are um, thinking that there are certain Bible translations that are just throwing out Bible verses. Yeah, we don't want that. Get that out of here. No, that's not what's happening. So we're going to look at a couple of different passages, a couple of different verses and a, couple, and a few different translations and compare those. And I'm going to explain to you what is actually going on. And so our, our take five today is why are they removing this from my Bible? They're not, but that's the question we're going to tackle today. I'm going to have some verses on the screen here, but I've got a couple of Bibles in front of me. This is my new American Standard 1995 update. This is my CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. I use this a lot at youth group. Um, I use the NASB 95 primarily on Sundays, but I do look into sometimes the New Living Translation or ESV or different translations then as well. I prefer the NASB. That's my personal preference, uh, but I want to make clear that None of these are bad. They're different, and they have some applications they serve better in and whatnot, but there are, none of these are malicious in their intent. Oh, I'm going to get rid of things out of the Word of God, and that's what I want to kind of ease the worry about here today. So I'm just going to read through some of these. Um, for example, in the New American Standard 1995 update in Luke chapter 9, verse 56, it says this, and this is a continuation from verse 55, um, which if you have the NESB, partway through that verse, there's a square bracket. It says, and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you are, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went on to another village. Christian Standard Bible, same verse. But he turned and rebuked them, verse 55, and then verse 56, and they went on to another village. See the difference there? And then I've got a few other ones that I listed here. Uh, the New King James, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. NASB 2020 only says, and they went on to another village. CSB, we already read that, and they went to another village. ESV, and they went to another village. NIV, and then he and his disciples went to another village. The NASB 2020, CSB, ESV, and NIV, none of those say, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Similarly, over in Matthew chapter 18, verse 11, the NASB says this, I'm getting turned there. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. And then in the CSB, Verse 11, verse 11, wait a minute, it's not there. It's not there in the NASB 2020, ESV, or the NIV either, but it is in the New King James and the NASB 1995 update and the Old King James as well. So what's the deal here? Are, are these other translations like starting to remove things from the Word of God so that they can just rework it to say something, whatever they want? No, that's not the case. Uh, again, going back to my favorite translation, the New American Standard 95 update. It's in those square brackets. Some might be italicized, different ways of formatting it. And if you look in the footnotes of your Bible, you're not going to be able to read this from here, but um, 
Matthew 18, verse 11, it says, early MSS do not contain this V, which stands for verse. What's an MSS? Well, that's a manuscript. Early manuscripts do not contain that verse. So what's going on here? And this is what I really want you to understand. You don't have to understand all the history and um, of the manuscripts necessarily to a scholarly level at least, but it is important to understand why some translators have chosen not to put these into the verses, into their translations. It's not because it's them being malicious again, but it's because the way that people decide what goes into the Bible as an authentic and genuine historical document is they go back and the oldest documents that they can find, the oldest dated documents, those are going to be as close to the original as possible, right? And um, so say I wrote a, a love letter to my wife and um, included some things that she would have understood the context of, um, but I didn't fill in those more fine details. And then, but somebody who knew us, maybe they got a copy of that letter down the road and they wrote in some footnotes on there and said, oh, this is what he meant when he said this to his wife, so on and so forth. That's what's happening here. So scribes would have come by later in, in later manuscripts and put in footnotes, things that explain some of the context of what was going on, but it wasn't originally recorded. So no, these other translations are not removing things from the Word of God. They're just trying to be as close to the original article of writing as possible. And that's a good thing. There's, you can't fault them for that. They want to include what was most likely in the original forms of these documents. And that's what's going on here. So I wanted to let you guys know that. To take five to realize that you're not in a bad translation that's from the devil if some of these things are missing, um, or in brackets, whatever they may be. That doesn't mean that the King James and the New King James and the NASB 1995 are the only translations worth reading. No, that's not true. Uh, it's just different. And there's they're different for a reason. They're not just picking and choosing what they don't want to include. So I wanted to make sure you understood that because it will save you a lot of headache and heartache down the road and, and hopefully clear up some disagreements um, that you may see out there. So help lead people in the truth to this, and that's a good thing. Thanks for taking five of me today. I love you. God bless.